Hi guys, Aero here, and today we're going to be looking at Tooth & Claw performance and we're going to focus on CPU boost and also the new features, advanced CPU tweaks. So this video is going to be split into two parts. First of all, I'm going to explain these settings and how they work and how the chipset actually works so you have a better understanding of what to change. And the second half of this video is going to be focused on a couple of gameplays and demos of the actual Tooth & Claw performance mode working. Now, if you haven't watched part one, I'll include that in the description so you can have a quick look or you can click on one of the screens around here and I'll make sure you see. In the meantime, if you find these videos helpful, please do hit like and subscribe because it does help the channel. Now, let's go into the first part around explaining what these settings do. Before we start messing around with the app, let's understand exactly what the app does and the chipset that we're dealing with so you have a better outcome of trying to modify the FPS or your battery drain. So this is a nutty diagram that kind of lays out how the Ultra 7 258 is broken down into three main elements. So at the highest level, you have your CPU, and you have your GPU. Now we're gonna focus more on the CPU side, but just know that your GPU is made up of eight cores, which are called XE cores, and they can uh, run up to a 1.9 gigahertz. Your CPU in the Claw ATI is made up of eight cores, but they're actually broken down into two different sets. So first you have your P cores, which are known as your performance cores, and then Think of them as the heavy lifting, yeah? So they're the ones that run at full speed and really can boost up to 4.8 gigahertz from the base of 2.2, which allows you to do the heavy lifting. So whether it's gaming, editing, or emulation, they're the ones that you think have the heavy load. On the other side, you have your E cores, so the efficiency cores. So they can only boost up to 3.7 gigahertz, so not as much as the P cores, but the idea is these cores are more efficient and they're supposed to be running your background tasks or lighter tasks. So that means that everything happening in the background can still run and Windows is running or whatever you need to do in the background is still running and it doesn't impact your performance, yeah? Now, how does Tooth & Claw work with all of this? So a couple options. So in Tooth & Claw, the first bit is you'll have CPU boost on and off. And what that's really doing, if you think about it, is if it's off, that means your P cores and E cores will never exceed the 2.2 gigahertz, which is your base, yeah? Now, if you turn them on, and by default, CPU boost is on, then that means that both your P cores and E cores can achieve the top level gigahertz for both their specs. Now, what we're trying to do is saying that, depending on the game, and we'll talk about this, this can impact whether you're throttling or taking away resources because there's a big fight happening in your claw around what gets the amount of power to sustain the gameplay. Yeah, and you're trying to get a balance. Now, the other bit about Tooth & Claw is the most advanced settings. I will talk about this. So the advanced settings is really saying that by default, you have all cores scheduling automatically. So your OS, your hardware is trying to, and Intel itself is trying to say, depending on your workload, I'm automatically going to be assigning tasks and getting resources to these eight cores, and therefore that gets passed onto your GPU. Now, the advanced settings, you can change that to say, actually, I want to put more workload towards my P cores, or I want to put more workload to my Y E cores, or I want to disable my P or E cores, yeah? The other bit of it is actually your frequency. So we talked about the fact that you can schedule and you can send or, or divert work to each of these cores, but you can also tweak how much these can boost by. So we talked about the base, but you can lower the frequency. So not only can you say, I want my all cores, to, or, or I want to prefer my E cores, but I can actually say, I'm going to keep my E cores available, but I'm going to reduce the slider to three gigahertz here. And the idea behind that is that maybe you have a game that you want to still CPU boost, but you don't need that overhead to actually hit the frames per second that you want to achieve, and therefore you want to save battery life, yeah? 
So a couple of things, and, and this isn't a hard and fast rule of how to do it. This is just a generic guide. Different games are optimized differently and they work, um, you know, they might have a different outcome of how these settings impact them, but this is a rule that you can try and see how it plays out. So first of all, you know, when you don't change anything and you just turn on your game or you turn on your um, software, CPU boost is on and by default, all the cores are enabled and you're going to be trying to uh, schedule all the cores. The first thing you want to check is how much is your GPU being utilized. If the game's already utilizing 90 or 100%, then it's probably GPU bound. And if it is a GPU bound game, the first thing you can try is turning off CPU boost. If you turn off the CPU boost, you'll probably see either it's hitting the same amount of FPS or you get a slightly higher FPS. But the key thing is that you'll be saving battery life and reducing your fan speed as well. The interesting thing is if your GPU is struggling and uh, we'll see an example of this here where it isn't hitting the high 90s or high high numbers then it may, might probably might be CPU bound and what you want to see is that is your CPU boost enabled or have you lowered the um, cores and therefore you might want to put them up so this is a combination of things that you can do um, we'll talk a bit about you know core policies and whether you can try this and what it means and then last of all, this is like trial and error, yeah? So you probably want a good overlay. You want to see your FPS and what your temperatures are. And the idea of all of this is advanced tweaking. Most people probably won't use this, but the idea of the future, and I, I've talked to Basim before, is that we want to get to a state where we can have loaded profiles and therefore you don't have to do the hard work, yeah? The community work together, create right profiles, and therefore you can plug and play and pick the right profile and we'll kick off. The only thing else I want to mention is, um, and lots of people ask me about this, is all the CPU boost settings, because there's quite a few. Um, I'll let you quickly read this um, to understand it, but really, I would only really look at three options here. You either boost the, uh, disable the CPU boost, you enable it, or you look at the last option, which is efficient, ag aggressive, guaranteed. So at this point, you're just looking for a slight boost, but sustain slight boost, yeah? Uh, all others are things you can try out, but I, I think these three are the most efficient ones to use. Now let's head into a couple of games for examples of this in play. So here we are in Silk Song, and as you can see, I've modified my overlay so you can see the usage of the P cores and the E cores. And as I'm playing the game, you'll see those go up and down. The other th uh, thing to notice is that this is what the default gameplay would be like if you booted up Silkson. So you can see that by default, if I open my settings, normally CPU boost is enabled and everything is set to auto. Now, for now, let's go back into the gameplay. And you can see by default, at 1200p you can see I'm burning around 13 watts or 20 watts in total for this device yeah now the first thing you normally do is you can go in and you can just disable CPU boost yeah and what that would do straight away you'll see that it's lowering the total wattage because this game definitely doesn't need that much power to run. So I already dropped down to eight watts and 14 watts total used. Let's run around a bit, go up. And you can see what it's doing to the picos and ecos. Just gonna jump around a bit. And that's quite good. Now let's take it to the next level. I don't need this to be running at a 120 FPS. So I'm just going to modify that. I say let's put a frame limit to run. So let's say 60 FPS. So let's let, let's keep that in. So hopefully, there you can see, this is now dropped to 60 FPS and I'm now down to 5, 9 watts. Let's see if it goes up. So I'm just going to do a bit of gameplay. So 10 watts. So hovering around 9 and 10 watts and it's holding 60 quite well 
Let's, rest. Let's see what happens then now if we do a more advanced tweak. So let's say, scroll down to the bottom, and I'm going to do only equals. Yeah. So what this is now hopefully going to be doing is going to be transferring my load. You can see, can you see it's uh, transferred the load to the equals now. So the picos are kind of shut down. And you can see that from 10 watts and 5, it's dropped to like hovering around 5 and 8 watts now. So 8 and 9. Oh, don't want to jump down there. So we'll just go around the block. And I'm still holding the 60 watts. Now, this is advanced tweaking, but this is stuff that kind of, you know, if you want to really squeeze out the ultimate gameplay, then you can do this kind of stuff. And look, I'm still holding 60 FPS. I'm running around 8, 9 watts here. So now let's move on to our next game in Elden Ring. And let me just quickly show you the settings that I'm using. So for demonstration purposes, I've disabled uh, CPU boost for this. So you're, you're aware of this. Let's go up. And I just want to show you what I meant. So can you see the GPU is hovering around 75? Um, it's trying to get up above 90, but it's not. And the FPS is around 36. So this is what I mean by a game that is CPU bound. So let's enable the CPU boost. Oh, missed it. CPU boost. Let's see what that does. So it's around 44. You can see it straight away jumped up here. And I'm hoping if I'm running around, there you go. The GPU's hit 100% now, yeah? 99. Straight away, FPS has gone up. So this was just an example of me trying to show you what a CPU game looks like. Now, my overlay is not perfect, but yeah, it's around 100%. That's what you want it to be around, yeah? Now, I'll be honest with you, I haven't messed around with this game to see what um, if scheduling makes this any better, but let's have a mess around. So let's tweak. Uh, let's say you prefer equals. I don't know if that's going to save my battery. So we're around 46. So what's that up to? 42 total watts. Is that 41 total watts? And is that holding my FPS? So it looks like it's much higher FPS. I don't know if this is the correct thing, but like I say, this is a demo just to say how you can mess around with your gameplay and see the right balance between battery life, FPS. So for our last game, we're going to be exploring Red Dead 2 Redemption together. This is a game I haven't really tried any of the performance settings on so we can learn together. I think the longer term goal for this tool set and the developer is to make game like profiles. So it takes the guesswork out of it and then hopefully with the community working together we can get good results and move this source forward. So yeah, let, let's see what this does and what results we can get. So I'm just looking around, FPS is hovering around say 67, 70. Oh, so it's a it's a good result on this. And I am running 1200p. And we can see it's hovering around 29 watts and 44 watts together. But I can see the GPU is nearly maxed out. Yeah, so it's around, it definitely looks like it's a GPU band game. So the most obvious thing to do here is first of all, let's turn off the CPU. Yeah. So let's disable that. And let's see what that does. So straight away, we still got our, uh, yes, 69 FPS, still good. And the total wattage has dropped slightly, probably not how much I wanted to drop. Let's have a look. Supply a frame limit on it, 60 as well, let's see what that does. That's kicked in, so that's smoothed my frame as well. Let's 
so I can see my GPUs drop slightly. So look, I managed to get it down to 39 watts and 26 watts. Now, um, yeah, let's mess around and see what else I can do with this here. Probably not a good idea. Uh, but let's change the scheduling. So we'll have further e cores. Let's see what that does here. So it's kicked in. So there you go. I've managed to get down to 37 watts, 60 FPS, locked. Not bad. <laughs> anyway, let's end the video now. Thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you again.